Hello and welcome to the European Galleries of the Zimmerli Art Museum at Rutgers University. Uh, my name is Christine Javiscus and I'm going to talk about an exhibition we have on until September 8th of the work of an artist named Henri Gabriel Ebel. And we are very fortunate to have about 160 works in the collection by this artist who is not such a household name today but was very famous in the 1890s and early 1900s in Paris. Ebel uh, made his career primarily as a printmaker and as an illustrator, contributing uh, designs uh, to illustrate journals and magazines of the day. This exhibition is focused pretty much on his heyday in the 1890s when he, his uh, artistic star rose very quickly. He, pretty soon after he got out of art school, he um, was getting important commissions for, uh, to contribute designs to magazines and uh, independent print commissions. He was a very good friend of the famous artist Henri Toulouse-Lautrec, and uh, they had some similar subject matter in terms of looking at the popular entertainments of Paris and putting them in their work. And they also had very distinct um, style and very exuberant uh, line uh, that their, their work is associated with. And I hope you'll see that uh, in some of the works by Ebel today. Ebel's probably uh, first important commission was in 1893 uh, when he was asked to contribute a print to a new publication called La Stampe Originale, the original print. Ebel very significantly contributed a color lithograph of a circus scene. And it's significant for two reasons. One is the fact that it's a color lithograph. Um, lith color lithography had been very associated with commercial work and sort of, which is at a lower, considered somewhat a lower level than fine art. And Ebel is an artist who is credited with bringing color lithography back to the level of fine art. So it was significant that he contributed a color lithograph to this portfolio, whereas other artists contributed etchings and engravings and more traditional um, artistic printmaking media. And the second uh, significant is that he uh, included a scene of the circus. And now we Americans think of the circus as being Barnum and Bailey. The circus comes into town. The big top is erected. They stay in town for a few weeks or months, and then they go away. But in Paris in the 1890s, the circus was actually a permanent form of entertainment. There were three permanent circuses, and they regularly had troops coming in, primarily to perform equestrian events. The color lithograph that Ebel created for La Stampe Originale um, is considered one of the um, landmarks of color lithography in this period, and certainly a masterpiece of Ebel's career. And um, when you come and see the print in person, you'll see just how incredible the color effects are. It's almost like a drawing um, in the way that the colors are layered and that his really strong graphic style comes out in this particular print. So about a year later, Ebel had his first one-man exhibition. At this point, Ebel is very well known for his images of cafe singers and actors on the stage, and he's becoming more known for his circus uh, prints. But very interestingly, he decides to debut a series of etchings at this um, exhibition called Les Forains, uh, which translates to the fairs. And there was a very specific type of performer that often um, entertained at these fairs. They were, they were traveling performers, and they did the kinds of acts that Today we associate with the circus, um, but we might think of them more as the types of sideshows, such as um, you know, really brawny men lifting heavy things, tattooed people, those kinds of um, attractions. And Ebel focused on these types of performers in this series of 14 etchings. The, the series of etchings uh, features uh, both, as I mentioned, the strong men, um, it features sort of performers sort of standing around, looking a little bored. Um, so he's not only capturing them in mid-performance, but also in sort of those 
uh, middle periods where they're not on stage and sort of trying to get at their emotional state. It's also interesting to see in the, in the prints some of the um, performers also acting as barkers or trying to drum up the business to attract the fairgoers to come see their performances. The Zimmerle Art Museum at Rutgers is located at 71 Hamilton Street on the University's College Avenue campus in New Brunswick. The museum is open September through July. That means we're closed in August. Um, and our hours are Tuesday through Fridays, 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Saturdays and Sundays, noon to 5. Uh, we are closed Mondays, major holidays. The Zimmerly signature event is Art After Hours. The Zimmerly is holding a special Art After Hours on Wednesday, July 10th from 5 to 9 p.m. to celebrate the opening of a new exhibition, Maples in the Mist, Chinese Poems for Children, illustrated by Jean and Miu Sen Tseng, featuring artwork from the museum's extensive collection of original children's book illustrations. It will be an exciting summer event for families. In the fall, Art After Hours will resume its regular schedule on the first Wednesday of the month from 5 to 9 p.m. The museum's website is www.zimmerleemuseum.rutgers.edu. From there, you can link to our Facebook and Twitter pages. The Zimmerley's phone number is 848-932-7237.